uh, single seat deregulated micro lights. Um, it's basically uh, if the plane weighs less than 115 kilos and there's a, a maximum wing loading of 10 kilograms per square meter, stalls at less than 34 knots, um, and it's deregulated, which means you don't have to have it inspected. There's no design criteria. You can design it, build it. It has to have a registration. It has to be insured. You have to have a license to fly it. Uh, the whole idea of the, the class is so that it's a very low inertia aeroplane. So you know you can hurt yourself, but there's very little chance of hurting anyone else. It gives you a free hand to, um, to, to for people to go back to what micro lighting was all about: designing, building, pioneering. Well, the Scirocco is French design, originally conceived in 1982, and then commercially made available in 1983. The Scirocco was one of the first ultralights to use composite materials. At the time, they were using fiberglass and epoxy. It won numerous awards when it was originally launched. And in fact, in 1987, uh, it was one of the first ultralights, three-axis ultralights, to circumnavigate the, the globe. About five months ago, a group of us flew to the Isle of Wight. Uh, and over lunch, Dave and I got talking, and he shared with me his idea, uh, which at the time seemed a little bit crazy, about uh, developing uh, a, a twin-engine microlight that would be powered by two model jet engines. Apparently he'd been toying with this idea for a number of years. In fact, since the announcement of the SSDR category in 2007, he got the idea for building a uh, jet-powered uh, microlight. Well, I see the uh, Sirocco at the flying show um, on the light aircraft stand. Um, got chatting to Paul there. Um, he was trying to sell it as a, an SSDR. Uh, but I think they struggled to get it under the weight limit with a 35 kilogram engine on the back. You know, the shape looked good, it, it, you know, it wasn't ideal, the wings were too big, uh, there was a few other bits that were, were not ideal, but the actual fuselage shape was, it looked good to me, it looked an ideal platform to start with. I really liked the idea of the uh, Scirocco and and I also thought, how else in the world will I ever be able to log single seat twin engine jet time? So I was really attracted to the idea. So the next day, I rang Dave and said, let's go have a look at the Scirocco. We jumped in the plane, flew down to uh, the light aircraft company. You took one look at it and said, done deal. <laughs> there was a lot of designing involved. Um, I cut 1.2 meters off each wing, uh, reduced the angle of incidence of the wing by five degrees. Um, all flying tail plane, um, to me, didn't look right. Unfortunately, the Scirocco has a bit of a checkered history here in the UK. The all-flying tailplane has always been a point of weakness from the original design, and it's been prone to flutter. Tragically, in 1995, a pilot was killed as a result of a, of a structural failure of the tailplane. Following this fatal accident, uh, the BMA recommended a whole series of changes to be made to the design of the tailplane. However, in 2004, another tragic death occurred uh, as a result of the attachment, the way in which the tailplane was attached to the aircraft, it failed. Uh, that was a design issue. You could, just by looking at it from the outside, you could see that that tailplane wasn't ideal, um, so I completely changed it. We knew the wings were too long for what we needed to achieve. However, we needed to make some trade-offs between a smaller wing area and meeting the requirements for a wing loading of 10 kilograms per square meter or less. What helped was the creation of the engine support wing that sits under the main wing. That allowed us to further reduce the span of the original wing. We designed it so that it was both strong but did not create a situation where we would uh, feel asymmetric thrust. So we did a bit of a trade-off on the engine support wing as well. Tell me a little bit about the engines that you that you The engines on. are made in Germany by a company called JetCat. They're JetCat P200SX, which are they're pretty much the biggest model engines um, you can get. Uh, seemed 55 pound of thrust each. Originally, I wanted to construct the engine support wing out of carbon fiber, but Dave convinced me that simple aluminum ribs and sheeting was the, was the better approach. However, the engine nacelles are constructed out of carbon fiber with a Kevlar lining. 
Well, in, any safety features that you put on the plane? Yeah, um, there's a, a sprung loaded recovery chute built into the wing um, that uh, you can pull a handle and there's a sprung loaded drogue that pulls the chute out the top of the wing. Um, and what about redundancy? Yes, both engines are completely independent. There's not a single joining factory in the engines. They've got separate tanks, separate batteries, separate fuel lines, separate switches. Everything is completely separate. The Shrocket is equipped with a reasonably comprehensive set of instrumentation for an SSDR aircraft. And it includes a VHF transceiver, two fuel com computers that are able to calculate both fuel flow and fuel capacity. It also has an engine monitoring computer for each engine. Each individual engine has its own engine monitoring computer. It also has a neat little multifunction instrument from Funkwork that provides airspeed, altitude, vertical climb, and GPS information all in a single small unit. And just tell me a little bit about the first flight. What was your, what was your thinking? How did it feel? How did it respond? Um, well, the, the, the first flight, I suppose you could call a hop, uh, probably about 10 feet off the ground. Um, I just lifted it off, got a feel, made sure that everything felt like it was working. Um, did a couple of them to make sure that that was okay and the engines were reliable, and then uh, and then the first flight was much like any other test flight, you just concentrating on systems, make sure everything's okay, make sure you're flying the aeroplane, most important thing, um, and it just felt okay. It feels much like flying a glider, there's no real um, vibration, everything's very smooth, you've got a lot of wind noise, but you've also got the whine of the turbines behind you, they're not, they're not noisy. Uh, you could just hear a constant whine. It was fantastic to see it fly for the first time. It just sounds and looks great. And has it met your expectations? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it succeeded them, really. I, I was expecting it to sort of stagger off the ground, maybe gain a bit of height and do a few circuits and land. Um, but we only put 14 litres of fuel in, uh, and after a 10 minute flight, I still had eight litres left. So, so it's, it's, not, it's not as, you know, it'll cruise 55 knots and half throttle. So now I've flown it, I, I, I do believe it will probably hold altitude on one engine. It's got, it climbs at 600 feet a minute with, with the two engines, so I'm quite happy that it'll continue and certainly extend your glide to, a, to an area where you can make a safe landing on one engine. We built the Shiraka to have a bit of fun, and that's what we're going to do with it. A number of people have asked us if we have any plans to commercialize it. We don't think there's a market for a single seat jet, twin jet engine aircraft. But we do think it could generate a lot of interest. So Dave and I plan to do some display shows in the spring and summer. And that includes both RC model shows as well as full-scale aircraft shows. So, uh, so what next? Um, hopefully, if, um, if Jetcat can uh, come up with the bigger engines. Um, <laughs> so you even want more power? Oh, absolutely, yeah. They're, they're talking about a couple of um, 300s, uh, which is another 50% more power, uh, which would really give you a short field. Take off. At the moment it takes about 150 metres to take off, uh, it'd be nice to get it under 100 metres um, yeah. so you can get in, get in that smaller airfields, would be nice. The response to the project has been fantastic. Most people love the idea and recognise the motivation behind the Shrocket. It was to have a bit of fun, that's what we've had, and it was also to see if we could build and fly something unique, and I think we have. Yeah.